right, welcome back to Respawn Aim Fire. We clapped successfully together on the fourth <laughs> try, you guys. Adults Clapping's we hard. are. Adults. This is episode 66 of your favorite video games Ooh. podcast. You know how I know it's your favorite? I read your diary. Skipped all the <laughs> weird stuff about Satan and murdering animals. Th- that was my diary, Chad. Holden. This week, we have not a lot of stuff to talk about, but also at the same time, kind of a lot of stuff to talk about. My name's Chad Michael Innes. Your name is... Oh, my name? Uh, it, it's Holden DePardo. I almost forgot it. It's Holden DePardo. And by the time you guys are listening to this, it's Holden's birthday today. Born on yeah. the 4th of July. Ha ha ha. Happy birthday, Holden. Oh, Chad, thank you. It is my birthday. He's I share a birthday a with America. He's a dandy. There's a, uh, a kid in my entire school history named Derek Goff and his birthday was the 4th of July but until college I never believed him (laughs) (laughs) he he always said no I was born on the 4th of July just like America and I just thought he just told people that because he didn't like celebrating you know at school when someone has a birthday you like get cake and everyone celebrates I just thought he didn't like school celebrations he just wanted it in the summer and I never believed him and then no. I saw him actually, like, when Facebook became a thing when I was in college, it was like, oh, he's actually celebrating his birthday. Yeah, it's funny. It's not a, hol- a birthday you'd really lie about because it's actually kind of a crummy birthday to have your birthday. Because as a kid, it's like, hey, do you want to come over to my birthday party? Oh, you have plans already? Oh, no, I get it. It's cool. <laughs> oh, Holden, I'm your friend. <laughs> oh, thanks. But as you know, I don't really celebrate my birthday too much. I don't really get super into holidays probably because everyone ignored my birthday as a kid <laughs> maybe that has something to do with it <laughs> everybody if you're listening to this tweet at holden depardo happy birthday and Aww. then give him the middle finger emoji <laughs> <laughs> that actually if you really to put the middle of finger emoji in there that would make my day that'd be hilarious yes i'll do it i'll do it while you're talking about something i don't care about during this <laughs> <laughs> well oh, let's jump man. into things chad Jumping into things, guess what, Holden? Do you remember when Steven Spielberg came out on stage at E3? Actually, I don't remember whether he was there physically or not. But it Steven was a, it Spielberg was a video. is producing a Halo television series. Did you know that? Yeah, he said it five years ago. Was it f- only five? Because I thought it was 35. <laughs> Holden, it yeah, has he's... finally been picked up by Showtime. The show is maybe happening. It's definitely, I don't know, like, I'm so not convinced by this. It's oh, been no, absolutely on not. and off. Until I see, like, the trailer, like, we actually have footage we're showing you. It's coming in this date. I'll finally believe it. But it's passed through so many directors over the course of 17 years. In 2001, when they first said they are going to make a Halo movie. Oh, I didn't even right. believe them five years ago when they said they are going to make a Halo movie. I didn't believe them then. Or a TV show, whatever it was supposed to be. So I'm well, really talking about that Halo movie still. forever with the director from uh, well, it's, as you mentioned, it's been through a zillion directors, but um, including Neil Blomkamp. Yeah, Neil Blomkamp, that's the guy. Bloom, it's, I like to say Blomkamp. It's that's also you also it's like to say Ubisoft. Blomkamp. It's wrong. So yeah, it's B L O M Camp. It's Blom. Hold on, I'm going to read some stuff that you've already highlighted because I didn't read the article because I'm a millennial and I only read headlines. <laughs> Showtime is giving the franchise the prestige pay cable treatment, greenlighting a new TV series based on the game. Network president and CEO David Nevins is calling it our most ambitious series ever. <laughs> Leave it to a games developer to use the word ambitious. No, but really, most ambitious ever is such a key phrase for developers. It's going to be ten episodes in length, All right. which is pretty standard for a you know a show a nowadays. Cable series, yeah, yeah, not terribly surprising there. Um, it's being brought to us by Kyle Killen. Um, he's a showrunner. He made a wake. I don't know if you ever saw Wake. I didn't. Nope. I thought that looked really dumb. So I didn't watch it. <laughs> um, and it's also being made by Rupert Wyatt, who made. Uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which was the worst Wait of the new movies. Wait a minute. Awake. Is that the movie? No, it's a TV show. I mean, sorry, the TV show. Actually, all I remember is the intro where it's just a dude with his eyeballs. <laughs> that's so so, so maybe So maybe Lost? No, no, no. That's yeah. the first shot of Lost and the oh, last shot okay. of Lost. Spoilers. Yes, Awake. It is. It's the Whoa, dude in his eyeballs. Whoa, major spoilers. I did watch this for like half of a season. It's not good. <laughs> So he's making Halo. Yay! Here's why I did watch it. Because Jack's son in season six of Lost is the son of the guy in this show. Oh, interesting. Um, it's also going to be on Showtime, which 
Which means the I, one person who pays for Showtime is going to have to share their password with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so we think it was watched by one Showtime account, which means at least five million people watch this episode. What else is on Showtime? Ray Donovan? Uh, right. Weeds I think that's was on it. Showtime. Dexter was on Showtime. No, but Dexter's um, on Netflix now, so no one needs <laughs> to pay for Showtime anymore. No, but really, like, I feel like if they said HBO, it would have been like, ooh, it's going to be on HBO. That's interesting. Maybe I'm excited for Halo now. If they said Showtime, I'm like, oh, so poor man's HBO? Mm, I'm not excited <laughs> about it. Yep. Poor man's HBO. Even though it costs the same. It's not even poor man's because it costs the same as HBO. It's more of just less informed consumers HBO. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, shit. So, Holden, obviously, I know the answer to this. Are you excited? <laughs> Oh my god, so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> that sounds great. I'm not excited. Who knows? Maybe it'll be good. Did you ever watch Forward Unto Dawn? Oh, the Halo web series? No, I didn't. The we- I watched. I heard it was bad. I think I watched like two episodes of it. It was only like four episodes, maybe, or five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. it was not good either. I, I expect it to be a higher production value than something like that. I think there's going to be serious money behind it. I think this might be Showtime's run to have a big like Game of Thrones... We're spending a hundred million per season, but it's going to bring in a lot of people to watch this show, and I think it will. Yeah. It'll bring an audience as long as it's good. So, do you think it we'll should see. be? Do you think it should follow the storyline of the games or Master Chief, or do you think it should just be other stories in this world? So, what they've said is that is going to be quote dramatizing an epic twenty sixth century conflict between humanity and an alien threat known as the Covenant, otherwise known as Halo. I don't think they're going to put Master Chief because it's kind of one of those things of would you put link in a game would you put these kind of i guess to much even as a sound protagonist he's spoken before but i don't know like they've you've never seen his face before are they going to have him behind a mask for the entire show like that's going to make it hard to empathize with that character i think they're better off just having it exist in that universe as yeah, and not so be too. centered around master chief you mentioned link is that zelda netflix series still happening i think that was just a rumor i really don't want that to happen though okay I don't want that to happen. I'd well, they, honestly be very disappointed if they made that show. If it centered around Link as a character, at least. Yeah. But well, even that's then, like, starting production in yeah. early 2019. Not coming for a while. Hold in. Well, on, you know as what's... a TV show, though, if it's starting production in 2019, it could come out I mean, late yeah, 2019. Could, it could come out or... 2019, but... Yeah, I don't think that's, that's the a case. a year so from now. I can only care about what's right in front of me. As oh. I said, I'm a millennial. I reserve reading articles for one a week. Everything else has to be headlines. <laughs> From Facebook. From Facebook. I actually I downloaded the new beta for iOS and it is uh very good. I, it's a good I beta. Did, it is it's very good, but I put a screen time limit so that it'll warn me, Hey, you only have five minutes left to look at Facebook. Now your Facebook time is up. I did it for fifteen minutes a day. That's it. Facebook is fifteen minutes a day. Ooh, good for you. And it's glorious. When I had an iPhone, I set like Reddit to a half hour, and I hated it. But I was good for me, so I kept yeah. it. Um, Hold on. Speaking of things that you did Halo. on your phone, I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm done talking about Halo for now. I will come back to it sometime and never. But when you played things this week, God damn, I'm good at transitions. When you played <laughs> things this week, I didn't even realize you were transitioning. What did you play? <laughs> what did you play? Um, what does playtime with Holden look like the week of July? Whatever the fuck we're in, 2017. Well, 2017, tell me, tell me yeah, 2017. Games. is 2017. Um, well, I played our barf of the month, which is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Mankind we'll talk about divided. that in a little bit. Uh, I played, you know, I'm sticking with The Witcher 3. I'm going to give The Witcher 3 a solid try. I, you know, a few hours into it at this point. Because so, I didn't play a lot of it because I had to play Deus Ex. That's mostly what I played this week. Yeah. But I played more Luminous. Oh, my God, Luminous, man. It's so good. It is in... Easily in my top five Switch games so far, and it is easily I would recommend as like a must buy game on if you have a Switch, it's a must buy game. It is so good. Would you call it a Best Buy game? It's a it's a Best Buy. <laughs> I'm I'm really in love with that that game. I love the track list. It's all just like it's not. Here's the thing about the track list. It's all just dance music, but it's very. All the songs differ. They're pretty different from each other. And none of them are, like, super amazing great. But they work so well with what you're playing that it's one of my favorite game soundtracks. Even though I nice. know, like, if I heard that song on its own without the game, I probably wouldn't care about it that much. Minus the first song, Shining, which by uh, Mondo Grosso is the artist of that song. That song's awesome. That's a good song. I recommend it. Regardless but now if you game. hear those songs in real life, you're just going to go into, like, this... 
beautiful mind style thing where you're just imagining Tetris pieces falling all over the world around you. Oh, I already think about the pieces when I'm not playing the game. It's it's bad. I get very obsessed with this game in like chunks, and then I forget about it, and then I'll come back to it again and play it for months on end. How I'm just so excited about the is, is it more than no dollars? It's fifteen dollars. Oh, that's it. I might yeah. actually buy it then. It's awesome. It's seriously, it's a must buy game. It is so much fun. But I don't. Do you you don't like dance music though? So I'm not sure what you'll think of it. I don't. I don't enjoy the dance or the house. But it's it's not like club music it's more relaxing it's hard to ex- describe you kind of have to play it all right or to even just listen to some of the songs on youtube or something but it's it's an awesome game i highly recommend it i can't recommend it highly enough it would be in like my favorite games of the year if it weren't a remaster okay so it's also on playstation i didn't know you that disqualified things uh no i I'm, would I'm consider gonna play it, it on switch otherwise later. mario kart would have been in my top five games last year oh yeah oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, does Zelda Breath of the Wild count as a remaster of the Wii U game, even though they came out on the same day? <laughs> uh, yes, it does, Chad. It counts as a remaster. We'll strike it from all of our best of lists, which means just mine. Nice. Yeah. Hold on. Here's what I played this week. Anytime I don't care what Chad, you played, Chad. I don't care if you care or not. I don't even care. I don't even care. Uh, played some more of Mario Tennis Aces. Last Ooh. time we left off, I was like, I played a lot of the single player. Meh, meh, meh. Uh, you online? And then you I was online? Like, oh wait, no, I haven't done online yet, but I have done what? more just like computer matches. I haven't played a whole lot of it. I played. Maybe You're playing computer hour. matches because you want to feel good about yourself. I you don't want to feel so bad against. I feel so fucking good about myself right now because <laughs> I fucking slay this game. That's You're gonna the first learn... time I've ever used the word slay in a sentence and meant it. And man, I do. <laughs> what about Santa's slay? You never said that seriously. It's a different slay, Holden. Now here's the thing: Are we talking They're about called homonyms? Are we talking about Santa sleighs in his sleigh that carries the reindeer, or or that the reindeer carry? Or are we talking about the horror classic Santa sleigh? Oh my sleigh? god! Oh my god! Completely unrelated, but kind of related because it has to do with horses on a roof. <laughs> 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 oh my god! I was watching Portlandia on Netflix. Oh boy! <laughs> Portlandia season eight, episode one. There is a sketch about. The women and women first. Oh, I love um, women women first. That and, bit is so funny. But they're like in a cabin in the woods, and they're and and there's this herd of wild horses that is like vermin, and they're like <laughs> they're pissing them off. You have to as soon as we're done recording this, go fucking watch that sketch. And there's a okay. part where on the roof, and I have I have done like I <laughs> I've done two spit takes. Just randomly thinking about that, and I've gone back and watched. Well, don't overhype it. Like it. Don't overhype times. it. I'm, I'm, I cannot overhype it. It's, Nothing's ever funny. It was like, dude, it's the it's funniest thing ever. The, you're never gonna see it coming. But you watch this, thing. and at minute three, second two, you're gonna laugh so hard you'll never it's see it coming. The stupidest thing. It is so fucking stupid. Well, that when show you watch is kind of like, stupid. Why in a good way. I don't mean that in a negative this is way. It's funny. And then you watch it again, and you're like, oh my god, Jet, there are horses. Can I level roof. with you? I always wonder whatever you think is funny is funny. <laughs> hold on. You have a very That's strange fair. sense of humor. That's very fair. <laughs> but hold I on. love you, Chad. I speaking also of played, Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, speaking of Mario Tennis Aces, uh, I played a lot more against the computer and loving that a lot more than the single player campaign. I'll play some more online later. But, oh, and Detroit Become Human. Man, we're getting really far into that game, and I am loving it a lot. Like, I've I, decided I... Sorry, I'll, it's your turn. I'll, you, you speak. Thank you. So as I was saying... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, just had I have a feeling... As I was saying... I'm that every review... Like, your impression of this game, I think, has to do with exactly what storyline you get. I think there just might be shit storylines. There might be ones that play out really well. But do you just happen to find the best ones? I mean, we are, we are stumbling into some really great stuff. And stuff is not going as we intended sometimes. And we're like, God damn it, I can't believe that happened below... But, man, is this thing interesting. And, like, we mentioned in our initial, like, when we talked about it for uh, leaderboards last month, we we mentioned that a lot of things people have problems with, like the on-the-nose type slavery references, like mm-hmm. I have a dream and standing on the back of the bus. Like, those are things that are, they are actually pretty, not, they're, they're solid. They're, they're not calling them out in there that, yeah. that much. And the I have a dream thing is totally, like, one of eight options you have to paint on something. So it's not even like it's okay. show like that blatant. But anyway, freaking loving that game. Uh, and then I also played Deus Ex: Mankind Divided, 
which we'll get into in just a second, but I didn't like as much because it wasn't Detroit, and I wish I was playing Detroit the whole time. Interesting. Um, I've decided I'm going to play Detroit, but Good. what I'm going to do is now that Heavy Rain is available, now that I also have Beyond Two Souls, I'm going to play both of those games before I play Detroit. I don't feel a huge rush to play Detroit, but I want to play Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls before I get to Detroit, just because I, I want to play those games, and I hear Detroit is better. Uh, so I yes, don't want to start with Detroit and then go to Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls and be like, wow, these are garbage. Something so. else I would suggest you do, play with somebody. Whether it's mom or brother or friend, play with somebody. Because what like, about a dog? Can I play dog, with a dog? Dog works as long as the dog is in Perfect. control of the controller. <laughs> because it Olivia, actually, it do does, something. It adds to the experience a little bit because not only are you trading off back and forth and kind of exploring the story together and you can get opinions like, oh man, what should we say here? But... It also heightens it a little bit to be m- more of like a movie or film when mm-hmm. half the game you don't have control over what happens and you're hoping they push the right thing or they hit the, the button at the right time. So it kind of takes a little bit of that, like, you're not fully in control. There's some anticipation and some unknown about it when you do that as well. So I, I highly okay. recommend if you can find somebody to play it with, do that, because Lord knows I won't play it with you. <laughs> well, that all sounds good. Do you want to talk about Deus Ex now? Uh, hold on. I would love to talk about Deus Ex. Welcome to Barf! Backlog accomplishments with Respawn and Friends, where we talk about a single game that both of us have wanted to play for a while but haven't played for some reason, and now we're playing it. You can play along with us. This month we chose, for some reason, Deus Ex <laughs> Mankind Divided. <laughs> hold on. You chose this one, so I'm going to let you lead this conversation. Okay, I think let's start off with just what our initial impressions are, then we'll d- delve into story, gameplay, and, and that stuff. Um, All right. What are your initial impressions of this My, game? So I, I did... Not initial, but like you're I just... I did beat it. You did beat it. I, did, I beat it as well. I beat it. I played yeah. zero side missions. Overall, mm-hmm. this game has some some pretty fun gameplay, some interesting like techniques and things like that. So that had it not had that, I would have not finished it. I would have like texted you after two hours and be like, I'm no, nope, I'm just not finishing this game. Because I gave zero shits about anything having to do with characters or story or Oh what my I was god, doing I completely all. agree with you. I'm so glad you said that because I'm like did I not pay attention or do I not understand what's happening here? Like what's going on? Because I don't know what the fuck's going on in this oh, entire no. game. And it, I it, had no clue. To be fair in the game, to be fair in the game, it starts off with like a 20 minute, here's what happened in the previous, 12 minute, whatever, long, it was long, and it goes, here's what's happened in the previous game. So I'm thinking, oh, perfect, now I'll understand what's happening in the story. And then about two minutes into that, I'm like, wait, what happened? Huh? What are they they saying right now? (laughs) It was so dense and fast. I love that 12 minute video being like, what did I watch? I have no idea what's going on. And then I'm thinking, well, maybe you don't have to understand that context fully. I just kind of need to know the pieces. Like, there's augmented people and there's purist people who don't like augs. And, like, oh, if I just need to know that, that's fine. And then you jump into the game and immediately start going on this tirade of, like, the Illuminati and the the bus or the train station blew up. And I'm like, okay, this there's already too much happening that I don't understand the consequence of, the context of, why it matters in any way, shape, or form. Yep. It was very hard for me. But I... I mildly agree with you on the gameplay. So I in, agree with you on the story well, 100%. But gameplay, its defense I, on the story, it is the sequel to a game that we didn't play. Yes. <laughs> no, absolutely. But usually, like, if you were to play Uncharted, right? Yeah. You could start with Uncharted 3. And yeah, there'd be a few things you understand, but you could still follow the story. Yeah, you're right. I honestly used every single cutscene. Anytime that somebody was talking, I was like, oh, cool, that's the time to check my phone. Yeah, I had the same, and I was at first. I was like, "I'm." Let's, let's start with the story, then we'll talk again to gameplay. Because okay. when I first when I first started playing the game, I'm like, "No, I really want to pay attention to what's happening here." And they do this whole thing with the the main character Adam Jensen, and you know his wife died, and I'm like, "Oh, this guy, you know, he sounds like he's more than just an action hero." And then he's just an action hero. That's all he is. He's, he's no, the stupidest character. I literally so I was thinking I took a screenshot of this on my phone. Cause I I uh, picture this on my phone because I thought it was just the fucking funniest thing ever. I was thinking in my head, wow, this guy has no personality whatsoever. It's almost as if it doesn't matter what he's thinking. And then one of the dialogue options pop up that says, for Madam Jensen, doesn't matter what I think about it, Doc. I've got a job to do. <laughs> oh, what a stupid, dumb character. With really, his stupid I... sunglasses and his Keanu Reeves face. <laughs> He was so uninteresting. And it's not like there's a side character that made up for it. Every character, I felt like they were like, no, this is 
a personality that we decided not to develop in any way, shape, or form. Oh, yeah. You'd be like, oh, he's a doctor, but he's kind of zany for no reason. He's still telling you to grab something and come back. Also, speaking of characters and being bad. Yeah. Is this game a remaster, or were those just really shitty PS4 character models? No. That, yes, this was a PS4 game, and I agree. The facial animations and the oh my God. are terrible. The graphics are okay, but I mean... My God, the facial animations are awful. But what makes it worse is it's not like they, in most games where they just use the, I mean, they do use the in-game engine characters, but there's this weird moment when you go into a dialogue sequence where it kind of cuts and it seems like they're processing it differently. Did you get that? Yeah, it's the same thing that happens when you go to take out an enemy, and it yeah, cuts. <laughs> it's so weird. It doesn't. It breaks it up. It's yeah. so unnatural feeling. It just made me feel like I was playing a game, which made me less interested in the story because there's that there's no flow into conversations with characters. Yeah, like either it has been in games, you walk up and a cutscene starts playing, but it kind of just goes naturally into it, and there's no like second of black before it goes into it or you just walk up to a character and you start talking to the character in game yep. as if nothing transitioned but this has like a second transition between every single moment you talk to a character but sometimes you just walk up to a character and it just starts playing that sequence other times you have to walk up to them and hit square to initiate the talk sequence and that was also kind of weird for me too yeah and then yeah the um this is more on the gameplay side but when you go to attack an enemy and it's like a little cutscene, yep, that felt really like PS2 era crap. Yeah, and then I would always have to like reorient myself afterwards, be like, all right, what direction am I facing again? Where's mm-hmm. the next enemy? Not even that, but it it it's, feels kind of cheap because when you do that, there's no risk that an enemy is going to see you when you're taking down an enemy. Yeah. They could be practically right next to you, and it didn't make a difference. Because it's a, it's a cutscene. It's not a in-game moment. It was very strange. Yeah, I did not enjoy that aspect of it. I didn't enjoy that aspect. There's a lot of things I didn't enjoy about this game, but I think story and characters is chief among the things that really took me out of the game. And I expected a lot, considering... I mean, not only is this game scored really highly, but also when Cyberpunk was shown off, everyone kept saying, oh, this is just like Deus Ex. I did hear now, that comparison a lot, yeah. And now I'm thinking, like, why? Like, beyond it being Cyberpunk, why? C- Cyberpunk looks really cool, and Deus Ex has just felt super generic. Yeah. Maybe it has to do with, like, like the, the skills and the augments that you could put in. Maybe that's what they were comparing it to with or maybe Possibly. just the feel of the world, like the technology. I don't know. Oh, can we talk about the world for a second? Let's talk about the world and how it all is the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so basically you're in Prague most of the game. And it's empty streets with occasional people talking on the street with no importance whatsoever. And then you'll go to a train station to go to a different part of the city and you'll think you mistakenly went to the same part of the city you were just in because it looks <laughs> exactly the same. Um, Chad texted me and kept saying, this is a little bit above Metro for me. It's not as bad as Metro, but it's a little bit above Metro. I was thinking a lot about Metro in those sequences where you're walking throughout the city and you can hear people talking about the world and the state of the world and all that kind of stuff. Just like in Metro, how when you walk through some of the train stations, you'll hear people talking. And it plays out in a very, very similar manner. The difference is is that Metro came out on last-gen hardware, and Mankind Divided came out on PS4 hardware, and they play out almost identically in how that works. Going down to, it felt kind of like, the way the characters move felt really crappy, but I could forgive that in Metro, because it was last-gen. This is current-gen. There should be some, a little bit more animation there, should be a little bit more realism, and it just felt like people were staged. It didn't feel natural at all. Yeah. And essentially, it's Prague is a hub world. You just kind of walk into Prague. Someone says, "Go to that side of Prague and you know get this you know evidence that we need." And you go there, you get the evidence, and you walk back to the person. And you're just kind of walking through Prague. And I felt like they're trying to go for this open city feel. Yeah. They were, well, did you do any of the side missions? Because I did not. I did a few of them. Okay, that's that's maybe they're trying to go for that open world. Like, oh, on your way to get the evidence, maybe you can stop by so and so and help the rats in the sewers. 
but I never did any of those. No, shows, it, so. it's not. It doesn't play out quite like that. It'll be like you go to talk to a cop, and like early on, you talk to this cop, and this cop will say, "Hey, um, you you need this certain ID card to get past me. Uh, I know a guy who can make the ID cards if you don't happen to have one." Wink, wink. And you can go talk to that guy and either tell him to stop because it's illegal what he's doing, or get a card from him. And I'm like, I don't care. So I just left. <laughs> So I just left. So I just left. Um, yeah, the world just wasn't interesting either. The idea behind the world is cool. You can have augmented people versus real people, and there's almost like a racial tension between them, almost. Yeah, that's that, that is was the interesting. most that I got, that there was these augmented people and the non-augmented people. Non-augments hated the augmented people. And augmented means, like, they have somebody their body replaced with... Uh, some enhanced stability, whether it's like their mm-hmm. arm can do crazy things or they have legs that make them jump really high, shit like that. Yeah. Or robotic eyes that let them see other things. And then there's this group called ARC who are people with augments fighting for the rights of people with who are augs, but then they get like crazy anarchy and that's who we're trying to stop the whole time. But you're an augmented person yourself and you're right. against the augmented people. I was confused all the times... Is Adam Jensen, being an AUG himself, helping an anti-AUG group win, or is he helping the AUGs win? I, I really didn't know. I, because, I don't know. Because I... you were – there was a line that uh, Miller, one of your contacts, makes where he basically says something along the lines of, um, like, I know you're an AUG, but da 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 which made me think, oh, so this guy's not okay with AUGs. I, I didn't really know, but it really confused me because I'm like, I don't know what Adam Jensen's place in all this is. Well, does he either. support Augs or does he not support Augs? Or is he helping people at least? Because he really just seems like a like a mercenary figure, or he just gets paid money and he does things. I didn't really see any personal involvement on any on any level from him. Yeah, I gave up but, trying to figure it out. Yep, but I think we I think uh, highlighted the fact that we don't understand the story of this game <laughs> yep. or the characters. Let's talk about the gameplay. So you said you actually liked the game. I gameplay. did. I did like the gameplay. Okay. I I enjoyed a few things about it. One is that I enjoyed the fact that there were probably maybe three or four different ways to approach every single encounter. Yeah. You could find a vent. You could break through a wall. You could go in guns blazing. You could take people out silently. Uh, so I enjoyed that a lot. And that's what really got me through is each each encounter being a little bit different. And I was like, all right, I'm looking forward to the next one. At, but the whole time, I it wasn't quite as smooth as like Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm-hmm. And so the entire time, all it really made me want to do is play the slightly better, more polished version of all of that, which is Metal Gear Solid Five. So I actually downloaded Metal Gear Solid Five again to start playing right afterwards. But I did find the augment system really interesting. It, there were some clever aspects to that, absolutely. There were, yeah. Like the, the, I don't know, the security hacking. Oh, so yeah, that's another option you had a lot of times is you could hack, like computers to get door codes or you could try to brute force your way or try to find a different way around that door you could hack security bots and drones and shit like that to take people out for you so that was kind of a cool aspect to it there's a small little puzzle game similar to like bioshock when you're hacking shit Mm -hmm. it was a much easier game though than bioshocks yeah definitely i did a lot of the hacking a lot of it i did i did quite a bit of it i didn't give a shit about credits i didn't spend any credits at all the entire nope. game neither did i so i didn't do any of the extra stuff to get credits so did you go in kind of guns and blazing or did you try to do stealth or i did what was stealth 100 your... percent. same here okay i did stealth 100 percent, which means i was climbing through vents a lot i felt like that was kind of most yeah. of your stealth option was climbing vents well i actually did i climbed through vents uh, a lot but i i did a lot of uh throwing objects to dis- to distract people then taking them out and then dragging their bodies so that they didn't ri- raise an alarm i did a lot of that as i i my didn't way throw spaces. a single object the entire you didn't game. see nope. i love that we had that choice though like we could both yeah. play stealthy and do completely opposite things so what i would generally do is i would i use the ghost ability a lot but okay i got frustrated with how you use your augments so how how do you even describe this? So there's like a battery meter on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, right? Yeah. And there's a tiny portion of it that's like a thick line, and then the rest of it's a thin line. And 
I never had mine up to full charge. It was always maybe like 75% of the way there. But yeah, when you start too. using an augment, your maximum that you can use, like your maximum charge goes down a little bit and then it kind of depletes the rest, but then recharges up to where the new lowered maximum is. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. It's hard. Like you, to just... you have a small chunk that will always recharge. Yeah, you have a small chunk that always recharge, and then, and then your, you ma- you your maximum gets taken away if you keep using items. Yeah, you have to use bio cells to recharge the rest of it, which I can never find bio cells ever. So my charge was always very, very low the entire time. So I could use my ghost ability for maybe five seconds. That's what I, I'm. I mostly the augs that I used most were. Uh, I got the one where you could shoot electricity out of your hands at people and target multiple mm-hmm. people to take them out. And then the uh, Typhoon, where you throw the shit all around you in a circle to take out a, like an AoE effect if you get caught. And then the only one I used that consumed energy, like those were both consumables that you could craft or find. Mm-hmm. The only one I did that used energy was the invisibility. And I only used that one like if I got caught or if someone was about to see me, then I would go invisible real quick and hide behind something. That's, so yeah, I never that's really used that as like a, a stealth tactic. I use as a stealth tactic all the time. So I would generally be around a corner from something and then just turn on the go. Uh, they call it, I think it's ghost armor is what they call it. But we'll call it invisibility for right now. I'm using invisibility to just run around the corner really quickly so they don't see me. Uh, I use it all the time for that. I use my um, Braxis um, points to increase that as much as possible as soon as I could. I use that one a lot. Um, what I found is like a little trick is you can go up to a door to uh, hack it and get into it. If you turn on your invisibility right before that, it will stay invisible the entire time and not deplete your energy at all. Oh. So that See, was very I, I did useful. run into that once or twice where I started to hack something and then they caught me while I was hacking mm-hmm. it and I got started being shot in the hacking game. And that, that's one thing is that I felt like I couldn't fight back because they were really tough, the enemies. They were. Yeah, I, I I would love to see someone do a lethal run through of this. I mean, because... I saw that there are augments to like increase your health and things like that, but still, they yeah, those bullets hurt. They hurt a lot, and your bullets don't seem to do much damage, especially with the last few levels. The enemies got a lot tougher. Yeah, in the last few. Levels. Yeah, that difficulty ramped up like crazy in mission sixteen and seventeen. Yeah, with the all the other people who had augments, like yeah. So the entire game, you're not fighting anyone else who has augments until the last two levels, and they're honestly shorter levels i don't know that's where i spent most of my time oh really okay yeah i somehow so on the last two missions i somehow skipped a cutscene with miller like we're supposed to make a choice do i save the delegates or do i go fight the final boss oh you skipped that i somehow missed that entire area of the world and i just stumbled upon the final boss i did the final boss first as well I well I did that and then I had no fucking clue where to go from there. And I killed all the enemies in the giant like dance hall room and I'm just like running around and I spent out and I went on walkthroughs and I'm like walkthroughs are like, All right, now go back to where you saw Miller and I was like, I've never seen Miller. Where the fuck is this Miller room? And that's what Also, you don't even know who Miller is because who are any of the characters? (laughs) That's true. (laughs) He's like, what is the Miller room? And then they're like, yeah, the room where you made the choice and then I would see a video and it's like you have a choice to go here, here. I was like, No, I've never seen that choice in my life. So I spent See, probably I, a good hour trying to figure out just how to get to the room of the delicates, and then obviously they were all dead by the time I got there. Yeah, but they were dead, all dead for me by the time I got there as well. Um, but I, I fought the boss first as well, and that's where I actually got caught up. I had a really hard time against that boss. Oh, really? How did you beat him? Um, I hacked everything and had everything attack him. <laughs> nice. I hacked a turret, and the turret took him down a bunch, and then uh, he blew up the turret. And then I used my shock shooty thing just to electrocute him a lot until he passed out. Yeah, so I... Oh, so you did like a... Um, what do they call that? A non-lethal. A non-lethal kill, yeah. So I never got that option. I think it's because when I got there, my my augment power reserve was at the lowest level it could possibly be. And I think you need a higher level to use your knockout ability on him. Oh, yeah, because that requires energy. It requires yeah, energy, so I wasn't able to do that. Mine was a consumable, so I could just shoot shit at him. So I basically got all these – I got the turrets and I got the drones to attack him. He ended up beating all of them, and then I ended up hiding an event, but he knew I was in there, and he was just shooting constantly into the vent. So then I would poke out, shoot him in the head with a shotgun a few times, then move back to (laughs) regain health, and just rinse and repeat until he was dead because I tried so many times to kill him and died so fast every time. Nice. So I had to, like, stealthily get away. 
I found the right route to get to all the um, the hacking portals. It ended up working out, but it took me a while to beat him. The final level in general took me a little while, not because the level was long, but just because I kept dying. I never increased yeah. my health once. I never increased my strength once. Me neither. I just invested in whatever power I thought I would need at that time. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing. Um, on the augment path, though, and this is what I thought was very clever on the augment uh, augmentations. You realize early on in the game that you have additional augmentations that you weren't aware of. I guess in the previous game you weren't aware of them. And now you have access to them. But if you turn them on, you'll overcharge yourself. So you have to turn something else off. Yeah, you have to sacrifice something else in order to gain this new superpower. Which is kind of cool to have a trade-off and say, okay, I really want this power. But what's one that I might not use? You kind of have to think carefully because then if you turn that one off and you end up needing it, like the, I think the Typhoon was the one where I'm like, I turned that off. I'm like, crap, that would have been really useful against the final boss. Oh, that was so useful. Especially in the the room with all the augments in Mission mm-hmm. 16, like that dance hall area. I used the shit out of that. And that would have been really handy. Didn't have it. And I also had a ton of ammo for it, too. So I would have been set at the end of the game if I had that augmentation. But early on, I chose to get rid of it. Because I was going, well, I'm not going for a lethal approach, so I won't need that one. And I ate my words. That was a mistake. <laughs> That one was non-lethal, though. Wasn't it? Was it non-lethal? I thought it looked like a bunch of explosions, so... But I thought it was, like, this knockout gas. Oh. I'm pretty sure it was non-lethal. I don't know. I might have been killing Maybe you were talking about something it. else. I don't know. Typhoon was the one where you just throw out a bunch of shit in a circle. And it has this green gas that comes up. Oh, no. There was another one that has, like, fire surrounding you. I turned that one off. Oh, okay. I gotcha. It was fire or something. I don't remember. But, yeah. So, would you recommend this game, Chad? Um, I mean, if you get this game for free through PlayStation Plus like we did, then it might be fun to toy around with for the gameplay, but I abso- I will not play another Deus Ex game. No, I wouldn't either. No. I also wouldn't recommend the game. I really didn't like it. No? I think this might be my least favorite game we played on a barf. I mean, it was no Metro. It was no Metro. <laughs> I mean, I say the same thing, but in the opposite meaning. I loved Metro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I texted you on the scale from Metro to Deus Ex. This is definitely a little higher than Metro. <laughs> but no, yeah, I enjoyed the gameplay enough to to actually make it to the end of the game. So mm-hmm. it was it was toy gameplay. Yep. Well, cool, cool. Titties and beer. Well, let's talk about some games that we haven't played. Oh wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, next month. Yes. Bar. For July, so it is technically July right now, but for the month of July, we will be playing Resident Evil, the very first Resident Evil. You have your choice of how you play it, whether it's the Resident Evil remake re-release HD that came out on current-gen consoles, or the Resident Evil remaster that came on PS3, or the Resident Evil remake on GameCube, or Resident Evil Director's Cut on PlayStation 1, or Resident Evil on PlayStation 1. Whatever you want to play it, play it. I'll be playing Resident Evil on PlayStation 4. Me too. I'll be playing the PS4 version. Oh my god, twinsies. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. It's going to be October. It's going to be Halloween in July. It's going to be October. (laughs) (laughs) This one, by the way, I looked up on howlongtobeat.com. Shout out to them. This one is only 10 and a half hours if you do the main story. And it's like 12 hours if you do main story and extras. Cool. So this is a little bit shorter one since we used a week to, to use for Deus Ex instead. Mm-hmm. All right, hold I on. I'm on so board. Those are games that we played. There are some other games that came out this last month that got some reviews. Let's and we're talk gonna about through those. Bring so, us to our leaderboards. We got three games. We got Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit, which was recently just announced at E3 and is free. Let's talk about that $3. one. $3. We have Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus for a Nintendo Switch. Ooh. And the new Two Crew Two Furious. <laughs> shut up. You <laughs> shut the hell up. Crew 2 is the official name of the game, which is a racing game that Chad and I have liked to make fun of a lot. So I just figured it was fair to bring it on to talk about how good the game is on its own merit, as crew opposed to two. us making crew Fast and Furious jokes around it, around it. So... Let's start with this. So, Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit is the first game. It has a 76 on Metacritic. 18 was positive. 8 were mixed. So, this overall, is the pretty one good. they announced at E3. It yes. is the prequel to Life is Strange 2 from Square Enix. Correct. From Dolt Nod Games. 
It is a free game, so you can get it on any of the major consoles, minus Nintendo Switch. And it got pretty good reviews. I mean, people seem to like it. I mean, it's free, so it's kind of hard to really... It's hard to harp on the game when it's free. It's yeah. only two hours, so it's not a massively huge uh, you know, uh, challenge to overcome. Apparently, it's not super difficult. It's more about the story between the father and the son. The dad's kind of an alcoholic. The kid has uh, like a Calvin and Hobbes like imagination. It's kind of more about their story. It does end not necessarily on a cliffhanger, but on like a to be continued. So there's going to be more to the story. So the speculation is that it's going to kind of continue in Life is Strange too, in some degree. Um, one thing that people are noting is that it is improved upon Life is Strange too in terms of its controls. It feels better. Sorry, Life is Strange, not Life is Strange too. It feels better to play than Life is Strange. So it's probably a tease as to what we're going to be seeing with Life is Strange too coming out pretty soon. The yeah. only real negative I've heard about this is it's not super challenging and there are too many collectibles, which kind of breaks the pacing of the story if you're just constantly collecting and reading things. It's interesting if you really care about the characters, but it might not be for everybody. Gotcha. Number two, we have Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus. Oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. It got an 81, which is our highest reviewed game of, um, of the month of the games we're talking about. Also 18 positive reviews, one mixed review, and also no negative reviews. This, honestly, I could have copy and pasted what they said about Doom because it got the same exact criticisms that Doom got and the same praise that Doom got, the Switch version. It is the full game. It's all there. It plays well enough considering it's on a handheld system. It's got blurry textures and low resolution. So it doesn't hold up visually to other consoles, but if you expected that, I think you're a little crazy. Have you started playing Wolfenstein 1 yet? No, I haven't. God, I hate the... you so much. <laughs> a Luminous came out, Chad. Luminous is out. You can't expect me to do anything. Uh... <laughs> so, one thing that I am hyped as fuck about, it sounds really cool, and you're going to roll your eyes. Get ready to roll your eyes, Chad. Can uh, you guess what this awesome ready. feature is about? HD Rumble. HD rumble oh, is yeah. unique to each weapon. So every weapon will rumble differently with HD rumble. But beyond that, if you're using joy cons and you're doing dual wielding in the game, it will vibrate left or right, depending on which gun you're shooting. That's awesome. All right. That's so cool. Subtle touch. I just, uh, I just want you to play this game so we can talk about it. <laughs> I, there are so many moments in this thing that are just like, that's fucking brilliant. Or that's the funniest thing I've ever seen in a video game. Or, oh my god, that's the most amazing badass thing I've ever seen. I will play it. I want to play it. I got other stuff. I'm doing The Witcher. I'm dedicated to The Witcher right now. But for three you literally more days talked about The Witcher on the first something. episode of our podcast, and you hated it. <laughs> but I'm excited for Cyberpunk, and I want to appreciate CD Ooh. Project Red, so I'm, go- I'm really going to try. I'm really going to try. Okay. I know, Chad. I'm a loser. <laughs> you disappoint me so much. Uh, do you want what's not disappointing, though? What's not disappointing, Holden? Wolfenstein to New Colossus. People seem to like it a lot. It's got the typical complaints you have with these current-gen games coming to Switch. Doesn't look as good. A few frame drops occasionally when there's a lot of enemies or big enemies. But other than that, it plays great, runs great on all systems. Boom. Great. Buy it. If you have been waiting for the Switch version, fucking just buy the Switch version because obviously you don't want to buy the other one, but everyone just play it. Next up, and the last one on the list here, is Two Crew, Two Furious. It got a Metacritic score of 69, 7 positive reviews, 9 mixed, and also 0 negative. No negative reviews this this month, Chad. That's great. Oh. So, one thing that they're saying is that the mechanic of this game that makes this different from the previous game is switching between car, boat, and, and plane on the fly at any moment. So you can be flying over a bridge, turn into a car, drop on the road, and keep driving. And they're saying that mechanic works really well and what kind of keeps the fun going throughout. There will be some races where you are switching between car, boat, and plane throughout the entire race, though not as often as they would have liked. The game's also fully open world. It is like an open world version of America. Obviously... Excuse me, obviously miniaturized and not real scale, but you can drive across the country. The, every reviewer basically said they wanted to see more 
long distance races. Like there's one that goes 40 minutes long. It's like an endurance race. They wanted Whoa. to see more stuff like that, like going across the country in a single race. That actually does sound kind of cool if you're into racing games. But it didn't happen nearly as often as they would have liked to have seen that. Um, they did speak both positively and negatively about the weather system. Anything with water looks great. When it's raining, it looks great. The water itself when you're in a boat looks great. The When it's done raining and the when the, um, the ground is wet, looks great. However, snow is strange because sometimes it will snow in Miami. And it does not <laughs> snow in Miami. Or so when, when you're it does, seeing people freak out. Exactly. So that was just that was kind of strange. Also, it, in terms of being an open game, a lot of things are destructible. So if you're in like a farm area, you can just drive through the farm fences. But you can't drive through chain link fences. <laughs> Which seems kind of strange. So they're of adamantium, duh. <laughs> so it's it's sometimes hard to tell what you can drive into and what you can't, which can kind of make or break a race depending on how close it is. Yeah, if you think you're about to take a shortcut and then suddenly, boom. Yeah, there were some complaints about the story and dialogue, not, like the cutscenes not being very good. Like the characters are forgettable. Um, it's a racing game. I don't think people are playing for it, uh, playing it for that reason to begin with. So that's kind of a null point in my opinion yeah um but other than that they're saying that the the car handling feels really good and pvp races aren't coming into the winter which is kind of a letdown but ultimately people are kind of saying yeah it's okay it's a good game it's not great it's a good game good i'm glad for them so maybe they will make crew three tokyo drift oh my god (laughs) shut up i had to i had to chad crew three tokyo tokyo Drift. drift Tokyo. Awesome. That's all well, we got. That, that's so, all of our leaderboards for the month. That's for last month. And what for is coming month, out yeah. this month, Chad? Oh, my God. There is just a, a few things this month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Just a few things. A few so things. welcome to What Are You Buying? Speaking of Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4, you guys. What Are You Buying? Where we talk about what's coming out this month so you can prepare your little baby wallets for all your little baby games. On July 3rd, which is the day that we're recording this podcast, there so is... So today. Yeah, today. Red this Faction the, the Guerrilla Remastered is coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. There are some people who love those Red Faction games. Uh, July 10th, a week from today. 20XX. What is this? I know all the games on this list except that one. This is the, like, Mega Man like spoof. You know, Mega Man is always like, spoof? in the future, year 20XX. If you look at it, it looks exactly like Mega Man. But is not it a, a, not a not imitation a spoof, or is it a, spoof, imitation. Like a parody? Yeah. Okay, imitation, okay. Like a spiritual successor. Ah. Kind of like, like Mighty, Mighty Number, Number 9, 9, except for it... it Jinx, you oh, owe me a soda. shit. Oh, that's how you play? Yep. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's coming to PS4, what do you think Xbox I was One, say? and Switch. How we do you play? Say, we say Jinx, you owe me a blowjob. Oh, yeah. Nobody no, not... ever follows through. Yeah, no, but you, see, you can follow through in a soda, so next time I see you, you owe me a soda. I'll Apple Pay Cash you. Oh, wait. <laughs> on july 13th we have two big names coming out for the switch we have captain toad treasure tracker which is also coming to 3ds Ooh, that I can't wait. Out. and octopath traveler coming to switch and early I think, reviews have leaked early for that and apparently it is awesome yeah it's an 80 to 100 hour rpg though so that's like along the, the lines of a persona game but i'm actually i think that's gonna win my money for the month I'm between that and Captain Toad and Mario Tennis because I haven't bought Mario Tennis yet. Uh, yeah. And then finally, July 24th, Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2 are coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. So if you're interested in those, they are separate ones. I do think they have like a bundle where you can get both of them. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes. Uh, that's it. That's really all that's coming out. I mean, there are some other things that nobody cares about that I determined, so <laughs> that's July, you guys. Ooh, packed. So you can use this to get through your bar for your backlog. Holden, it's been 49 minutes and we haven't even touched our quest log, so let's show that thing some love and open up oh, yeah. its book. Mostly just lists of games in our fetch quests. Woo! list it out so we have xbox game with gold and ps plus free games were announced xbox game with gold is going to include assault android uh is it cactus okay cactus. you wrote cactus <laughs> i'm like gonna double check that now because did i just mistype that can you look that up actually while i, I will look it up yeah okay so assault android cactus uh is coming to xbox one free death uh, squared is coming to uh xbox one for free it is and assault then a three- android cactus 
It really is. Wow. Okay. Yep. The uh, two games that are from 360 that are playable on 360 and Xbox One are Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown and Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Conviction. So those are coming. On PS Plus, we're going to have Heavy Rain, Absolver, both coming to PS4. PS3 is getting Rayman 3 HD. And Vita is getting Space Overlords and Zero Escape, Zero Time Dilemma. I've heard good things about that Zero Escape, Zero Time Dilemma. I've heard good things about that franchise, too. I've also heard good things about Heavy Rain, and I can't wait to play Heavy, Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain is great. It is a little dated. Uh, I'd imagine. It's a you know what I like? PS3 I game. like about the fact that you're playing Heavy Rain first. The controls in Quantic Dream games are are clunky. Yeah. So I'm glad that not... you're getting that experience with Heavy Rain. That way, when you go to Detroit, you're just kind of like, okay, this is part of what a Quantic Dream game is. But I also don't need necessarily precise controls because it's narrative. It's not like I'm right. platforming. So I'm not, I wouldn't be too bothered by that, depending on the degree and how clunky they are. So those are our free games for the month. Um, but PlayStation's all doing a mid-year sale, Ooh. which has a lot of really good deals in there. Uh, I listed a bunch of them, Chad. This is by no means all of them. Like, there was literally a 10-page list of just PS4 games on their website. So what are some st- – I have the list in front of you as well, Chad. What are yeah. some standouts for you? Like, so games- here are some, here's some standouts. Um, one, we tweeted this out a couple months or a couple weeks ago when it was on sale for four dollars. But order eighteen eighty six is on sale for five dollars. Mm-hmm. That's that's definitely worth five dollars. Wolfenstein: New Order and The Old Blood are both thirty three percent off at thirteen thirty nine each. Uh, Evil Within and Evil Within Two are on sale twelve bucks, thirty bucks respectively. Until Dawn, six dollars. Yep. If you're interested in Detroit, except for you, instead of playing, like, this android becoming aware type story, you want a teen horror flick, like, mm-hmm. this is a fantastic game for six bucks. Also, play it with friends. Oh, man. Doom? 20% off? fifteen ninety nine. Hell yeah. Fallout? Darksiders, if you're into that? Witcher 3, if you want to do Both that? Both Darksiders games. Darksiders 3 is coming out next year, apparently. So, when I play those two games, it's, what, 17 bucks to play both of them? Nice. No, fifteen bucks, dude. Yeah, that's some good shit. That's Absolutely. some good shit. Borderlands Handsome Collection. I fucking love Borderlands. I wish someone else in my life loved Borderlands. I haven't played it before. Tearaway Unfolded. I only played it on Vita, but I love that game. It's so good. Well, we've mentioned every other game except for these three, so we might as well throw them out there too. Prey, <laughs> Neo, and Wipeout Omega Collection, which includes the VR version of that as well, and The Witcher Three. We already said that. No, he didn't. I said now. that. Well, I don't listen to what you say. So I know. That's part of what makes you so attractive to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love a girl that doesn't listen. And then uh, other news we have in our fetch quest, just really, really quick, is Yves Guillemot of... Oh, I believe it's Yves Guillemot. <laughs> of Ubisoft. Guillemot. Promises there'll be more surprise Nintendo collaborations going forward. Good. What those could be, I don't know, but I've been very pleased with what I've seen thus far, so I am on board. You know now what I have time... to say to that? What? Fucking good. Well, it's not that's, fucking You know good? what? That's what's going to win my money. That's what's winning my July money. That Donkey Kong expansion for Mario Rabbids. Ooh, good choice. Yep. Do you know what's not fucking good, though, Chad? What's not fucking good? Our game potatoes for the week. g potatoes. G potatoes. We have three, really two. Um, first two of these are basically the same thing. One is that uh, Activision had a job posting that came out that talked about a next gen uh, game they're working on. It was from Infinity Ward, who makes only Call of Duty games. Yep. So everyone's saying new next gen game leaks from Infinity Ward. I'm like, you could have just said Call of Duty, but like, they yeah, don't really. That's not going to get people to read the article. They go, Oh, Call of Duty's coming. Okay. Infinity what, what Ward, else is new? they did, or they're doing this, they're doing Black Ops 4, yeah? No. Um, no. Is it Treyarch who's doing Black Ops 4? I'll look it up. Yeah. Look I it mean, up, yeah. But the if, point is that whatever it is, one of the next studios' is next game is a next-gen game, is the point. But it's not news, because they always make Call of Duty. They're not going to have Call of Duty on the next generation of consoles. Yeah. It's just, it's stupid. The only highlight there is that apparently there's going to be a single player campaign coming back, and that's that is interesting. That's worth mentioning. So Infinity Ward, the last thing they did was Infinite Warfare, which came out in 2016, which means their next game, if they continue on the cycle they've been doing, would be 2019. But I doubt if they're hiring for this now, th- this is for that. No, yeah, it's probably not. They, I mean, imagine these studios working more than one, you know, project at a time. 
Um, the other Game Potato, I think this is one of my favorite dumb stories that we've done since Game Potatoes come out. And that is that apparently Retro Studios is closing its doors. What? Have you seen this? No. So do you know what Glassdoor is? It looks like Glassdoor? Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know what Glassdoor is, it is a website where employees can basically review their company and say, hey, this is what it's like to work here. And someone left a scoldingly bad review for Retro Studios saying that management's a total mess and that their Nintendo's considering shutting them down after all these canceled projects they've been working on. And here's why that's really stupid. First of all, Retro has an incredible track record for making yeah. games. I mean, you could go Metroid one through th- Metroid Prime one through three, and then Donkey Kong Country Returns and Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Every single one of those games is a critical masterpiece. Every single one of them. <laughs> and there's also a pretty good release cadence to them. Right now, it's been four years since Tropical Freeze came out on Wii U. Four years, let's say that our next game might be coming next year, who knows? Even if it's 2020, five to six years, yeah, it's a long development cycle, but it's not highly unusual to the point where Nintendo would can the studio. Yeah. That's crazy talk. And if you're basing this off of a glass door review, I, I don't even know what to say to that. It's Obviously a glass door review. Anyone can post anything. Fired. Yeah, exactly. The person got fired, they're jaded about it, and so now they're posting a stupid review of their company. Nice. It's dumb. They're not closing. I would be floored if they were closing. I would eat Chad's socks if they were closing. Ooh. Let me think about what pair of socks I want to wear, <laughs> what I want to do to them before I make you eat them. <laughs> Chad's mission is to now make sure that Retro Studios closes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the big stories of the week, which there are only three. Oh, baby stories week. Actually, I'm going to start off with this one because I almost included this in Game Potatoes. Okay. And that is Fallout 76 won't have cross-play thanks to Sony. Todd uh, Todd Howard got on and basically said, yeah, there's not going to be any cross-play, and he just blamed it on Sony, basically. Yeah. Um, here's why this story doesn't really matter that much. They didn't make this decision post the Fortnite debacle. This has nope. been a decision that's been in the works for a long time. And just because of marketing and how things work, it just happened to come out now. Yeah, it's just it's just one more person. there. Like, literally, I can count on my hand the number of games that have cross-play between multi-platforms. Yeah. Like, even between Xbox and other things, too. So, it's nothing new. Almost no games ever have cross-play between platforms, but now mm-hmm. people are just pushing a little harder because of Fortnite. Yeah, I agree with the Fortnite debacle. I think that the outrage is justified there because it's just how poorly that's been handled. But this is a different situation. This is just trying to harp on that bandwagon of news cycle. Yeah, you know, it's like saying, article. hey, by the way, Call of Duty's not going to have cross-play thanks to Sony. It was, like, no, it was exactly. never going to fucking have cross-play. Exactly, exactly. But also, the timing of this, like... I just mentioned this a second ago, but like, this decision was made a while ago. Yep. It's not like between Fortnite and now, Sony said, oh, fuck these guys. Let's just make Fallout 76 not have crossplay either. And then they cackled like Mr. Burns in The Simpsons. <laughs> like, that's not what happened. This is just stupid new stuff. But it's interesting to mention that Todd Howard pointed this out uh, because I think it shows that there are developers who aren't on board with this. This policy, like it's actually, and I think the Rocket League developers talked about this. No, who was it? There was what was the game that accidentally had crossplay support? That was uh, that that was Fortnite, actually. I think. Oh my god, you're right. It was Fortnite. That was a long time ago, but I think it was the Fortnite maybe Save the World mode. Mm-hmm. They they alluded in that that they have to add in code to to not have crossplay support, right. basically. So that by default, really, there is no crossplay. So I'm getting the sense that developers are pushing back. And this is almost kind of Todd Howard's way of saying something on the matter. He can't say, screw Sony, but he can say, yeah, Fallout 76 isn't going to have crossplay. Contractually, we're doing this with Sony. Like, he's just speaking at it in the business terms. Yeah. So he's not really throwing Sony under the bus, really. He's just answering that question honestly that he was asked. But I think I think it's kind of a subtle nudge of, like, developers want this to happen. They want crossplay to happen. Yep. It'll make their game better if they have twice, potentially twice the number of people on their servers playing that game. It only but, benefits them. 
Does it though? Because they they mentioned that they only want dozens of players per. Server. I'm not talking about Fallout 76 in general. I'm just talking about but yeah, game like online general, game yeah. developers. Yeah, but even no, even with the dozens of players on one map in Fallout 76, they can get better matchmaking between players if they have more players to choose from. Yeah, so I still stand by that. Titties and beer. Speaking of Bethesda, do you want to jump to the next story? Yes, I do. So Todd Howard, not Todd Howard. Um, fucking shit. Hold on, let me. Todd Howard. The goddamn. Was it Todd Howard who did this one too? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Said that. Hey, by the way, when I said next gen for Starfield, when they revealed Starfield at E3, they said coming to next generation. He said it's going to be a next gen single player game. And he meant not only next-gen hardware, yes, but also next-gen software and next-gen something else, too. I've lost the quote in here. Next-gen engine. Next-gen... No, it wasn't. Basically, the only reason why I added this in here is because we had a conversation after Bethesda's mm-hmm. conference. And you said something about Elder Scrolls coming maybe soonish, And I was like, no, that's going to be next-gen after Starfield. And you're like, yeah, but next-gen might have meant something else. And then that's when my microphone dropped out, and then I re-recorded the audio, and I made you look like an idiot. I was like, no, that's the fucking only thing. <laughs> well, yes, now it is official. Todd Howard said, yeah, we mean next-gen you hardware. You didn't read all the news stories. Here's the full quote. The full quote is, what systems we put it on? That's the hardware requirements. It's still to be determined, Howard said. We're pushing it. We're thinking very, very far in the future. So we're building something, something that will handle next-gen hardware. That's what we're building on right now. That's where our mind is. But that doesn't mean it wouldn't exist on current systems as well. That's the full so it quote. Might be, it might be straddling there. It might be straddling. So I think they are weighing their options is what it sounds like. I think most likely this will be a next-gen game. But there is some hinting that it could be current-gen as well. I think it's in their best interest to make it next-gen because they can do more with that game if it were next-gen. And they also don't have to release a major game for a while. They'll be fine. Yeah. Skyrim will sell on Amazon Alexa, could, you know, save them for the rest of the time. So, I do think that it's most likely next gen, but there's that possibility of, of current gen hardware. If it is current gen, I'd imagine it'd be like Metal Gear Solid Five, and that came to both generations, and it was not super great on the older gen. There's I'd imagine quote. that's a possibility. It's either going to be both or just next gen, but it won't be just current gen. There is a quote that More I'm not finding quotes. in that Eurogamer. There are that two I just articles have to find to about it. that I just have to find to say fuck you. <laughs> that's all it's for. I already said he already said it could be current gen. I know the quote you're talking about. I can find that quote. Um, that quote. He specifically meant the combination of next gen hardware, next gen it software. It does mean and hardware and it does mean software on our side. And it also means gameplay. What does the next generation of epic single player RPGs feel like to us? Question mark. Yeah. That yeah. Was- so there is new hardware, and then they're like, well, maybe it'd also come to older shit too. Yeah. So it's definitely probably... coming out next gen. Yeah, like I just said, it's either going to be both. Or next gen only. But hold on, I didn't listen to your response because I was looking for the quote to say fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everyone to know I'm right. And the third st- quest that we have today. <laughs> you wanted to know you're so right that Holden had to find the <laughs> quote to prove him wrong. <laughs> that Amy Hennig has apparently left EA a long time ago and has started her own new studio. When uh, she was asked about. So she. For backstory, she was part of the studio that was working on the, uh, like the, what is it, Rogue, like like the Space Pirates version of um, the Star Wars game. Rogue Squadron? Ro- no, Rogue Squadron. Fucking, I don't know. Anyway, it was that single player, third person action game in the Star Wars universe that everyone was fucking excited as shit for that they canceled uh, after her, ga- her, after Visceral Games got shut down. Um... And then they mention in October when that happened, they're like, hey, yeah, Amy Hennig, we're in talks about what might happen next. And then we've heard nothing until now. And Amy basically said, she's doing a bunch of, uh, uh, quote, it makes it sound like I just went home, but I'm doing all this stuff, working on all the kinds of things. 
Those things she clarified revolve around, quote, a small little independent studio that she has independently formed, which she's still hiring for. She hinted at VR projects and a possibility, but didn't go in depth about what to expect. And she left way back in January, but then she just didn't feel like it was the right time to say anything until now. So she's been out on her own. I'm excited to see what she does next because I am the too. creator of Uncharted. Fucking amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm curious what, what she means by little indie studio. This little indie studio means don't expect Uncharted for me again. Like she's taking a very different approach. I think she's probably, after 10 years since her last game that actually got released, she's probably fed up with dealing with giant corporations. Oh, I'm and sure that's a huge part like, of it. She's just like, let me just fucking make something and put it out, please. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's probably going to be a much smaller title that she has full control over. And I think it's interesting if it's in VR, too. That'd be cool. I just, I'd be concerned if her first game was VR because VR is not big yet and there's not a lot of money in it quite yet. And she's starting a new, a new studio. She should really start with something that's going to make money first and then experiment after. I don't know. We'll but see. We'll see. Jinx again, you owe me another soda. You owe me two blowjobs now. <laughs> I am not giving you a blowjob. <laughs> Damn it. They never follow through. <laughs> Let's move into our main quest. Main for quest. For the day. So at E3, Phil Spencer basically said that they're working on next gen. I like to call him Consoles. Peace Ben. <laughs> and I think that opens up the gates that we're now finally in that period of transitioning to next generation. It has been announced on a stage at E3 that one of the companies is working on next gen. We're in that period now of transition. I think that's what that means. I think you're right, too. So I wanted to kind of just do a really early run through about what it's looking like heading into next gen by looking at the three major companies, PlayStation, Microsoft, Nintendo, and also the interesting kind of outlier cases, Google and Atari. Wait, did you say Ouya? <laughs> I definitely did not say Ouya. Well, we got to add Ouya to the list. I said the Shield TV console. Oh, um, man. <laughs> so we want to talk about like, what these companies look like they might be doing in E3 based on what we know and just our own speculation on the matter. Um, let's begin with PlayStation. Chad, you are our PlayStation fanboy here. Woo-wee! What do I'm you Mr. think? Poopy butthole. <laughs> what do you think next gen PlayStation is going to look like? Next gen PlayStation, uh, they have already said it's 2021 mm-hmm. is what they're looking for. But I think what really it comes down to is making something that's even more accessible, something more um, developer and and gamer friendly. Yeah. But I think the trend we'll see here across the rest of these as well is that it has to become more of a hybrid between game console and services. I think Microsoft's got a hard head start when it comes to services, but I think that's Absolutely. Sony's Sony's trying to figure that out and kind of get that in their portfolio by the time they reach 2021, because that's where the next thing's going to go, whether it's game streaming or whether it is, you know, a catalog of games that you get access to at any given time backwards compatibility that kind of stuff so it, even just with interface layout on ps4 like if i want to watch netflix i have to go to the tv section and then find netflix and go from there like netflix yeah. isn't just an app on my you know tray of applications or whatever they call that line i don't think they have a name for it anymore no oh. dashboard maybe it's, yeah, not, dashboard. it's not the cross media board or cross media bar anymore yeah dashboard works well enough I can dig that. So I think you're right. I think services is the key thing here. Ultimately, I think these consoles are going to be beefier versions of what already exists. They'll be backwards compatible. So they need to differentiate by what they're capable in the software. And that's going to mean services. Yeah. So I think you're 100% right there. Um, There has been rumored talks about the the VR support built onto the chip level. And I, I'm willing to bet that's probably true. That'll be a differentiator for PlayStation if they can say we have our own VR headset. Look Absolutely. how much more capable it is because we have this chip that's designed to work better with VR. I think that would go a long way because I do think that VR will kind of hit its stride once PlayStation. Like I've used Oculus, I've used I haven't used Vive, but I mean Oculus is very close to Vive in terms of quality, and I've used the PlayStation VR, and it's a pretty big difference between the two. It really is. The resolution is a lot higher just because you have a more powerful PC versus uh, a PS4. The quality of the graphics is a lot better when you're in there, too. I mean, just like when you were saying, when you went from a PlayStation to a PlayStation 4 Pro, the quality of the VR went up. Yeah. And I think that, that yeah, I mean, PSVR 
VR, PSVR is passable and it gets the job done and it can definitely can wow, absolutely. But it's it's still not at the power level I think VR needs to be at to really have solid experiences. Yeah, so I think you're right. I think we'll see that built in as well. Mm-hmm. I do want to, I actually was thinking about your point though about um, the four, the three years left of PS4. Yeah. To me, that can mean two things. And I need to go back and re- read the article because maybe I'm just missing the context of it. And that's why I'm bringing it up here because you might be able to prove me wrong because you like doing that. Yeah, um, I do. <laughs> so is them saying three years later for PS4, is that them saying like the 10 years of PS3, which PS4 will still be around for some of that 10 years? No, as I or recall, is... as I recall, it was we are spending the next three years learning and developing so that when we launch in 2021, it's going to be hitting the ground running. Okay, okay. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was very blatant. Like we are preparing for a 2021 launch. Okay, okay, that clarifies it for me then. Um, so yeah, I think that PlayStation. We don't really know much what they're going to do, but I think we're in agreement. Services and VR. Yeah, that's their big things. Let's go on to Microsoft. Here's what I think about Microsoft. I think Microsoft is trying to transition solely to a services and games company. Mm-hmm. And we we saw this at E3 where, hey, we've now acquired, almost doubled the number of studios that we have. We uh, already have backwards compatibility. We have Game Pass. We have Xbox Live. We have all of these things. And they mentioned, yes, we want us you to be able to play your Xbox games on as many things as possible, whether that is an iPhone or a TV app or your Xbox or your place, uh, maybe not, probably not PlayStation, but that you want to be able to play Microsoft games on everything. And then I think console wise, like the box they're developing, I mm-hmm. think they're pretty much going to be like, Hey, if you don't want to buy a PC, but you still want a high end version of these games to play, here's kind of like a pre-made pre-assembled box for you to do that on. So, yeah, I, so they mentioned they're making two consoles. Right. Yeah, I, I think and, there's going to be probably high end and low end. And it's just like, here's a spectrum of things. You could play it on your phone. Mm-hmm. You could play it on a $2,000 gaming PC. Or we'll make a couple of inter- in-between quality ones as well called Xbox for you to play on as well. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I, I think what it's going to happen there is when you're when a company's coming out with a new generation of consoles they have to think about the price point they have to think about the power really seat of course but for sake of we'll leave really seat out of this for right now so power <laughs> and and um and price are the kind of the two big important things then going to the next generation it's why Xbox 1 i think failed at the beginning it wasn't as powerful and it cost more yep. ps4 cheaper more powerful and i think what they want to do is say cuz they don't want it to happen again where you can say hey look call of duty's running at 720p on the new Xbox and 1080p on the new PlayStation they don't want to see that again right. so what they're going to do is they're going to release a much lower priced Xbox that can handle what they would want out of a next gen but as cheaply as possible and then you have the higher end, maybe two hundred dollars more for the person who wants higher frame rates, higher uh, resolution, all that kind of stuff. That way, they kind of win on both fronts. I actually think that'd be a really smart strategy. Yeah, I don't see PlayStation doing that. The games themselves just scale with whatever console you got, or exactly. whatever devices in I mean, front of you. Just like you said, PC like. Yep. And I think that's the way it's going to go. I think that's the smartest thing they can do, especially if they want to be a services company. Most people will buy the. $250 new Xbox. I'm just guessing the price. It's probably not going to cost that. But there'll be plenty of people, like gamers like you and me, would want to put down for the $500 Xbox One X2 or whatever it's going to be called. It's going to be we want the, as much power. The to, to, it's going to follow the Final Fantasy naming conventions. <laughs> but I think on the same note, though, that also means they can make their more powerful Xbox more expensive than a PlayStation because you can already get the other Xbox cheaper. So it kind of also loosens the restraints on the power peak they can hit exactly so i think it's i'm really really curious what they do is they they i think they actually have i mean obviously they're the only ones who talked about it but the most concrete path forward for next gen yeah they've bought these game studios that'll probably have games ready for next gen i'm assuming halo infinite which they never said is next gen but is to me is clearly a next gen game will be coming at the launch like, I think they want to hit the ground running, and I think they want to have all bases covered. And I think two Xbox consoles will do that. Yeah, and I honestly think of all of these things, th- this is going to be the one that beats it. Like, this is going to be the first next-gen console we see. 
I agree. I think in 2020, we'll see Xbox. 2021, we'll see PS, uh, PlayStation. I think it might be a year difference. So, hold on. As our resident Nintendo fanboy, what do you see Nintendo doing? So, I, want, I included Nintendo on this list not so much to talk about what a next-gen Switch would look like, but more about how they will handle the next-gen once it comes up, uh, about. Sure. So, like, you begin to see games like Wolfenstein 2, we just talked about, in Doom, Skyrim, coming to Switch because the gap between Switch and PS4 is big, but not so big you can't downgrade the games to get there. That's definitely going to change when PS5 comes out. Yeah. And when Xbox 2 comes out. Definitely is going to change. But I think, because I think Nintendo said they're not going to release their next console until 2023. Like they see a long life cycle for Switch. So, if that's the case... At that point, I think they're going to be okay. I've been thinking about this. I think they're going to be okay because by that point, there's going to be such a huge uh, um, install base of Switch that third parties will still be incentivized to make games just for Switch. Yeah, you're going I to think have that's a, where they're going to win. That's where they're going to win. Um, they still see themselves as a as a separate you know entity from the rest of the industry, and I think they're right. I don't think people who buy a PS4 did so despite Switch. It's supposed to be a PS4 Pro. Anyone buying next gen isn't thinking about Switch. Most people are going to have a Switch at that point. The first party lineup is going to be crazy. I mean, you'll finally have Metroid out at that point. You'll finally have Animal Crossing out at that point. You'll have, obviously, the Pokemon game they said is coming out next year at that point. You're going to have all these major games that are out on the first party lineup. I think they're going to be super fine. And actually, is at first we talked about how we were worried about that transition. A little bit, yeah. But I I'm feel s- like they've earned enough enough credit already. And enough clout that uh, third parties are saying that install base is crazy. I'm sure attach rate is crazy. Otherwise, they w- Bethesda wouldn't put every fucking game they have on it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's given people enough to say, all right, I see the success of that. We've ported a game over from whatever we've done previously to know that it works and how to work with the architecture. Mm-hmm. And we will now see a lot of third-party support in the vein of Octopath Traveler or Mario Rabbids, where these yeah. are these third-party companies making Switch-exclusive games that are fantastic. So, Unless indies are still going to be strong on Switch. Right. I think on top of that, too, the third parties. Like Right now, we're seeing a lot of ports because people didn't expect the Switch to be as big as it is. By 2021, developers will have time to make entirely unique switch games so we won't really be seeing ports we'll be seeing games that were made with switch in mind yeah and I think that's going to change things as well i think nintendo's going to be perfect they set up they're going to be fine and then switch 2 will come out and everyone will talk about how underpowered it is now it can't compete with ps5 and xbox 2 yada 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 i'll go through that whole cycle again any other thoughts about nintendo chad you want to move on to the incoming let's move on to players. the ones that are less exciting. I don't want to say less exciting, unless we're talking about Atari, but I would say they're new. They're incoming. Let's start with Atari first, actually. So it's hard to talk about Atari in this context. Without getting pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. Um, it's hard to talk about it because I don't know what the specs of their console are because still. no one does because they, they don't know. They have said that they're not trying to compete with PS4 and Xbox One. They have said that on record. The issue I have with that is $250 is a lot to spend in a console that doesn't compete with PS4 and Xbox One. Yep. It's right in that price point. So it's got to be somewhat capable. I think they said they're going to do streaming support. I think is what they were saying. They don't. They don't know. They're just throwing ex- buzzwords out there. Exactly. Exactly. So it's hard to say what they're what they're going to be. But I do think that if they hadn't totally botched their marketing so far, and they were working on a beefy console, I think the Atari brand could actually get them somewhere to legitimately compete. But they've unfortunately botched this so badly, and they keep talking about how they're looking for the right chipset. Like, you should have nailed the chipset down a while ago. Yeah. But also, if you're looking for the best chip, you're trying to find the most power, which means... But you're not trying to compete with PS4 and Xbox One if you're trying to find the most powerful chip? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. That's kind of contradictory to me. Yeah. This thing's going to come out next summer. No one's going to remember that it was a thing, and we won't be having this discussion when Next Gen launches. Nope. But I thought it was interesting to bring it up, at least. Yeah, it's definitely worth, like, reminding people, oh, yeah, remember the Atari VCR? <laughs> 
VCR. <laughs> yep. I still think it is an aesthetically cool looking console. I still like the design of it, but I think I'm, I'm the sure idea. You do. It's not going to be stupid. terrible. <laughs> I don't know. I think just my my thoughts on its existence taint the way I feel about how it looks. Well, aren't you just taint. a biased, horrible, evil person? I am so biased, y'all. Well, aren't you shouldn't be evil, just like Google, who also is going to be maybe entering the console field. How was that transition? That was a dope transition. You you are almost on my level. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to laugh because you're total like non-transition earlier we didn't even know you were transitioning it was spectacular it was brilliant Chad. See, You're it was amazing. so good i transitioned without you even knowing <laughs> so do you want to tell us about the google console chad uh no no okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean they uh at gdc they had mentioned that they were focusing on a streaming based console trying to make something that and they're trying to like court developers and people to develop for it now it looks like they're straight up looking to buy people yeah, by developers to develop for their new Google console, but they're still working out the technology, and it looks like it will be more of a streaming rather than like they will have some kind of hardware functionality, but it's going to be very focused on internet-based games. There's nothing official, so it's it's just like Atari. It's well, it's hard to talk about for different reasons. There's nothing official, just like how Atari is nothing official, but for different reasons. So. The buying of developers is what made me include Google on this list. At first, I thought, oh, they're making a streaming device. It'll just stream your PC games. End of story. But if they're buying developers, that means they want to compete. They want to have exclusive games to differentiate between other consoles. Yep. And I can't imagine they're buying developers to have an Ouya-style console. Yep. Like Atari well, is not buying developers. The intent is there. But we have had, I mean, Amazon. Do you remember when Amazon Fire... Or when Amazon bought game developers to make for their Fire TV, and that never took off either? Yeah, but I think Google recognizes Amazon did that, and that was a really fucking stupid move. So, <laughs> um, But they're, so they're, they're buying developers, and I think that it sounds like Google to say, hey, we're going to make a streaming console that's going to be like $99, but does the same games as PS5 and Xbox 2. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they want to do. Here's my concern, though, is that I don't think streaming tech is there yet. No, not quite. Not not to dedicate an entire console to explicitly. I just don't think it's it's quite ready for that. But it is very much like Google to talk about a technology before it is ready and release it before it is ready. <laughs> Google they've, Glass? No, they've never done that before. Google Glass, Google Wave, Google Buzz, they do it all, all the time. It just... Kind of in their nature. They've gotten better about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those initiatives. I mean, they've definitely started services and dropped them. They have a million different chat options. I mean, you have Google Chat, you have Allo, you have Hangouts, you had Google Wave before in the past. They've had many of different tries at a lot of different things. And I really hope they're not approaching this from a We'll throw this against the wall and see if it sticks. If you're making a game console, you're making a game console and you're dedicated to it. Because if you don't get a small minutia thing right, you could be screwed. There's a reason only two companies have figured it out that aren't Nintendo. <laughs> two companies that aren't Nintendo. I like that you made Nintendo its own thing and then two other lesser companies. Well, they started the, the trend in America and brought it back. They yeah. figured out how, how it works. Sega started... They were around for a while, to be fair, and they flopped. Uh, Microsoft and Sony have been around. They've the only two have really figured it out. Yeah. As a non-gaming company to figure it out. Yeah, I think that's, that's notable. Sweet. 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 Is that it? Well, Is that all you got to say? That, that's all I got to say on the topic. That was, sorry, I, I didn't mean to end that with such a lackluster, like, is that it? <laughs> is like, that it, Holden? Jeez. Just fucking, fucking end that one with a fart. <laughs> no, it's just really hot in here. I'm about to die. Oh my so god, it's so hot over this. here. As well. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to turn back on my AC. <laughs> oh, that was our main quest, everybody. We want to wrap up with our weekly forum where we talk with you, the community, about all sorts of fun stuff and announce cool new things like a participation trophy, which we'll talk about in a second. But one thing I did want to. What? Who said that? What? Um, one thing I did want to point out is from Fezd. Fez IRL on Twitter uh, tweeted us about our discussion we had last week. 
on PlayStation 4 and crossplay and the Epic account kind of situation. Mm-hmm. He tweeted us to clarify one thing. He said, for Switch users... Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Fuck. I lost it. Oh, what up, guys? Listening to this week's episode and just wanted to mention something I wasn't sure if you guys were aware, but PS4 does crossplay with PC and mobile perfectly fine. I share my profile between all three. From what I've been told, PS4 only doesn't crossplay with Xbox and Nintendo since they are their direct comp- direct console competition. I've also been told that since PS4 Mobile and PC have the largest Fortnite user bases, and that's why they've worked to perfect this connection. It's no excuse for the block progression for Switch users. I don't agree with them at all on that. Just wanted to do damage control for PS4 for a second, and I haven't turned on a console since completing God of War LUL. Well, hats off to you completing God of War. You and I are in an elite club together now, Fez, (laughs) of people who have played the best game on Earth. I still really want to play that game. I need to buy it. You need to get your life together <laughs> and put Luminez away and play God of War and Wolfenstein 1 and 2. So, uh, yes, it turns out, yes, PS4 can crossplay with mobile, can crossplay with PC just fine. The progression apparently goes across both as well, but it's just Xbox and Nintendo since they are console competitors. Yeah. I Thanks for pointing that out. I think it's a good point to bring up. It doesn't change my opinion because I still think that it's Xbox, Nintendo, Switch that need to be included in crossplay in the future, kind of ongoing. Yeah. It's I, a transition. I, I get that it's not been a, a standard set. It's definitely not been a standard set. Like we said earlier, most games don't do that. Right. I go but, back and forth day to day on, like, I get the business decision. I totally get it. If we think about how much money Fortnite, I think it was like made a hundred million dollars on mobile mm-hmm. since it launched last month. If you think about that, like if people are spending all that money on another platform and then they're playing with that money they spent on PS4, if PS4 takes what a thirty percent cut, that's thirty million dollars PS4 lost out on. But I don't think there's really a risk of that happening. I don't think someone say, "Oh, I'm going to buy the stuff on my Xbox, but then go play the game on PlayStation." No, they're going to buy the stuff using the console they're going to be using. And if they happen to be on the go, they'll pull out their iPhone. I mean, you could say the same thing you're saying about iPhone. iPhone gets 30% cut. They get cut out of that when they buy something on PlayStation and go to, to Apple. Yeah. The same thing That's happens already, there. But yeah. I just don't think that all it's doing is preventing you from playing with people on other consoles. It yeah. doesn't, like, I think you should be able to switch to other consoles if you want to, I guess. But... It's. I don't really think that would impact them financially that much. We'll have to. We'll have to see how they resolve, or just straight up fucking ignore. <laughs> I think they're going to ignore it, but they, I, th- I don't think they should. I think they want to ignore it, and that's why they put out like three different statements that are all bullshit. <laughs> well, they just want pissing to ignore, people, people off more just and wanting keep people. To, it, up. it makes people want crossplay even more. Yep. Anyway, I uh, appreciate. So, it. It's a good point, Fez. I, I, I will say it's a good point. Yep. It was worth noting. Thank you for bringing I, that to our attention. Uh, one more big thing to talk about before. This one is how Ooh. you guys get money. Do you remember when we used to do the photo mode? It has evolved a little bit to make it easier money, on money, you. Money. Um, we have a new thing called the participation trophy. The participation trophy goes to one person a month. And it is a raffle-based system. How do you get entered into this raffle? By participating with your lovely co-hosts here and our community. So here's where this idea stemmed. Holden texted me and said, hey, next year we should go to E3. And I said, you know what? I like that idea, but I want to make it worth it. If we go to E3 and we make that commitment, we have all this cool content, I want people to hear it. So at the heart of all of this, we want you to share us with your friends as much as possible. Get the word out there. Tell people why you love us. So all three of these things are ways for you to interact with us and share why you like our podcast. And with that, we reward you. Are you ready to hear how it's done? Holden, are you ready to hear it? Yes. Fez, Spooter Scooter, Jerson, are you ready? Every single week, you can earn up to three entries. How do you do that? One, you can refer a friend to our podcast. If you tell one of your friends about us, then once a week, if they tweet us and tag you in it, then you get entered into the raffle. So that means like, hey, Fez, if you say, hey, Bobby Joe Jr., you should listen to Respawn Aim Fire. Bobby Joe says, hey, Respawn Aim Fire. Fez just introduced me to you. You guys are great. Boom. You both get entered in once. 
You can review us on your favorite podcast. So once a week, send us a screenshot of your review of your favorite podcast service, and you get another entry. And then you can play along. You can send us a subscriber interrogative. You can tell us your thoughts on the barf of the month. You can send us some fan art, fan art, whatever it is, for one entry per week. Twitter is our most active platform, so that's definitely where you'll be seen most if you decide to interact that way. But you can also email us. You can Instagram us. You can post in the Facebook group. So those are you can get one point from each of those categories every single week for a total of 12 entries per month. Obviously, the review us on their podcast services. There are only so many podcast services, so that one's going to be used up pretty quickly. But at the end of each month, we will choose a winner at random from that pool. I'm going to be keeping a spreadsheet because our audience right now is not super huge, so I think I can manage that by myself. We may be evolving this as we grow. Uh, and then you guys will win $20 to the gaming service of your choice. Holden, did I make that sound super confusing or was that kind of like understandable? I got it. Cool. I understand. So we'll you repeat guys it can... next week as well. So we'll get another, yes. get another opportunity. When does the week repeat or restart so you can start earning again? It restarts with every new episode. So we're going to do that Tuesday nights at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern, mm. That's where you are, and that's where the world runs from. New York yep. City, times are shitty. Wherever I am, the world runs from. Not where that's Chad is runs, specifically. The world runs from Holden. It Wherever he is, me. it <laughs> runs away from Holden. I phrased that poorly, but you, you got my sentiment. We'll make a pin tweet with all of this information, as well as a photo of the trophy. It's pretty tits. Uh, and by photo, I mean I just drew a trophy, so you can get that. <laughs> <laughs> so for says like I'm gonna get a trophy, and then Chad just broke no, that. No, you're gonna person's get twenty heart. bucks and a drawing of a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the world about us. Tell them why you love us. Win some money. Uh, two more things before we wrap up today. Three more things actually. Just kidding. Two more things. Our bar for the month again. Resident Evil. Play any version you want. Send us your information, uh, your impressions of it. Any version of Apple. Resident Evil 1. Don't play Resident Evil Correct. 3. Correct. Don't play Nemesis. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, yeah. Write into us about your experience with it and earn yourself an entry in the raffle. Uh, and then finally, remember it's Holden's birthday. Tweet him. Happy Aww. birthday. Middle finger emoji on Twitter. At Holden DePardo. If you want to tweet me the middle finger too, just out of context, you can do that. At Miss Chad Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hold on. Do you have anything else before we wrap up today? Um, nothing important. Just that I love all you guys. That's so deep. Very deep. I'm a deep person. I can't wait to turn on this air conditioning. You guys, we'll see you next week. I love you. Goodbye. Uh, Bye. Meatballs.